This week, Team Claudia went to Castle Island, which gets its name because it used to be an island and there's a castle on it. The castle is technically actually a fort called Fort Independence, which was built in the 1800s and is the eighth version of the fort to be built there. And it's actually no longer an island either because they filled out the area leading up to it with dirt, but the name Castle Island stuck. And without further ado, welcome to our vlog. Hey, what's up guys? This is the Boston Goonies. Today we have Claudia, the team leader, and Ruben, not the sandwich, and hey y'all, it's McCray. I'm Will. <laughs> I'm Ari. <laughs> and I'm Vanessa. Hey Claudia, what are we doing today? hundreds and now a park. We're gonna be fishing, see what we can catch off the Boston Harbor. We're gonna see what fish are sustainable and which ones aren't and we're gonna show you guys all of that. Okay so I'm going to introduce you to the Massachusetts saltwater fish. All the fish that you will see are actually here either in the Boston Harbor or in the Massachusetts Bay. So the first fish we have is the known striper, very staple fish. Then we have the cod, which is what gave Cape Cod its name. Then we have a haddock, pollock, black sea bass, bluefish, porgy, tartog, bluefin tuna, bonito, yellowfin tuna, scup, summer flounder, and winter flounder. There are also two sharks located in the bay that are the shortfin mako and the bluefish. These are all fish that are caught in the Boston Harbor and in the Massachusetts waters. So today I'm going to show you guys how we catch. So basically, you open the barrel up so that the line can come out. You hold it with one finger like this, and then you cock it back and then release. So fun fact about fishing, sometimes the rod will get stuck on like seaweed or something and people will end up cutting it off because it's easier than trying to stay there for hours and let it loose. So today I basically my rod got stuck and I kept trying to get it loose and I finally did and when it came back up this came up with it. So basically I got stuck on somebody else's rod that got stuck and I got some loose. But yeah, when fishing that happens sometimes. So we caught sea rasps. Oh, he wants back in the water. We suspect. Well, we think, yeah, it's a sea rasp. We're not sure, but we caught three of them. We're gonna release them soon because it's not good to keep them in here like this. But yeah. Hey, Claudia, what do we have here on the bucket? Um, so what this little gadget does is basically just pumps the water, keeps it moving, um, that way when you catch your friends, um, they have a little bit of a more oxygenated environment, um, you know, just pump some air in there and the you know, bubbles just oxygenate the water a little bit more, it reduces levels of stress for fish or crab, um, as you know when you catch them, they're kind of freaking out, that causes an increase of stress and this kind of helps that out. So with the crab trap, is we tie it up to the fence nice and tight and then Ari is gonna yeet it into the water yeet and it's better to put it like near the bridge or under the bridge just because crabs really like to stay under bridges I don't know why but yeah that's the beautiful site that we're at So this is a spider crab that we had just caught right now and um, you can tell that it's being defensive because its legs are all sprawled out and when I touch it, it tries to pinch me. Hey there everybody, today is day two of being on Castle Island and today we are doing drawings of fishes that you can find in the Boston Harbor or Massachusetts. <laughs> Here's everybody. And we also have today somebody taking pictures of us. What's your name again? Kate. This is Kate. Hi. She officially <laughs> takes our pictures. 
to save the harbor. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ariana. We're gonna be talking about the minnow fish. Um, so first we have the opercellum. Um, that's this part over here where it's like where the gill is. Then over here the gills. Um, where they where it helps the fish breathe. Then we have the pelvic fin, which are the fins underneath the bottom of the fish. Then we have the regular fin on top and the lateral line of like on the fish's body. So that's a minnow fish. Hey y'all, so this is my scientific drawing of a green crab, scientific name Carcinus manus. So, as you can see, this right here is the abdomen, and then it has five legs all around, and each of them have the same parts. So, this is the propus, this is the dactylus, this is the carpus, and then the front two have the claws called chelas, and they also have these little spikes, which aren't labeled. They have five spikes for G-R-E-E-N. And fun fact, green crabs are an invasive species, so they don't actually belong here, and they're kind of bad for the environment. This is my drawing of a great white shark, or known as Carcadon carcarius. Uh, I drew it as like, you know, as well as I could. There's a dorsal fin, tail, anal fin, pectoral fin, the gills, the eyes, and the snout. Specifically, it's called the Anguli Lorenzini. It's how they can detect um, the electrical pulses of a sh like the fish they eat and stuff and it's really useful for them to hunt uh, down animals and they can also smell like a drop of blood in like a million gallons of water it's quite impressive so this is my scientific image of a black sea bass also known as its scientific name by central pistris striata not really sure how to say that but yeah um so these are its parts its lower jaw it has its snout and its nostril, its eye. This is its cheek. This is its maxillary bone. Its operculum, I think that's called. Its pelvic fin, um, pectoral fin. This is its um, spiny dorsal fin, so it has, it's like pokey. This is the soft dorsal fin, so it's not pokey. Its tail that is used to swim and its anal fin. Yes, ain't nothing. And that's because it's next to the bum. So that's why it's called that. But yeah. Hey everybody! Today we are out on the Boston Harbor doing a tour of the Boston Harbor Island. We have Vanessa as usual. We have David with us today. McRae. Devin, our cameraman. Here we have Will. Ari. Ruben being entertained. <laughs> As you see behind me, we have a view of Chelsea, East Boston over here, Charlestown on my right. And we'll check back in with you later. Bye! My favorite part of today's trip is not getting seasick like I usually do on boats, so that was definitely a plus. Um, and I personally really liked learning about George's Island and all the history that it has on it. What I liked about today was learning about Spectacle Island and like the history behind it. And um, yeah, and also like being on the boat is very different than like what I usually did. So yeah. My favorite part was learning about all the history of the different types of islands that they had out there that way and, um, and then going that way and looking at the uh, navy yard and other places like that. My favorite part of today's trip was the start when we were riding past Southie because I've lived in Southie my whole life and I didn't know that it used to be just all bay and then they filled it in. I was really excited to learn more about the place I've lived my entire life. My favorite part of today was learning about how most of the land here in the bay is made up of man-made land. So I think it, David said it was like 50% of it or more was man-made, which is pretty cool. And a way to tell is if you see like rock borders around the, the like islands, it tells you that it was man-made. Okay, so my favorite part was uh, enjoying the waves and also listening to the history of Boston Harbor. I love waves. And it was kind of fun. Uh, my favorite part of the history was probably learning about the sewage 
uh, learning how there's like a tunnel that goes like right, like that like delivers all the sewage into that one specific area where it's like the giant 100 and what was it? 131 foot tall sewage plants, and that's where all of our poop goes to, and that's cool in my opinion. <laughs> so, favorite favorite part of my job. I mean, there's several favorite parts to this job. One is being able to, you know, have a job where you get to be on a boat uh, in the summertime or in the spring and fall for that matter, but also sharing the history of, of Boston from the harbor perspective, because Boston's a harbor town, really a, a city built on its waterfront and seeing Boston from the harbor perspective, I think is one of the most important ways uh, and certainly the most fun um, ways to, to, to learn about Boston and Boston's history through the stories, the anecdotes, and, and the occasional bad joke, I'm told, that I wouldn't know. But uh, that's just one of the, one of the fun parts of, of this job, bringing people out who don't get that experience as often as I do and sharing that. That's certainly another part. And trying to get young people to be inspired and, and think about different career paths is certainly another part of the job. I'm having fun at my job. It's pretty clear that I'm having a good time. Um, people ask me uh, how long I think I'll do this and I can't think of a reason why I would ever stop. Retirement for me would be so boring if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now. So I could easily be retired now and still doing what I'm doing because everything I'm doing out here is fun. So being able to work on the harbor in several different capacities, that's a good time.